We're human. Sometimes we forget ourselves and we need to be reminded who the boss is, who the person is that God put in authority. When we talk back to our parents and we snap at them, the parent will have to say, you know what? I'm the boss of this house. I own this house. I pay the bills. I let you live here. You got to do what I say. <laughs> and it's a painful reminder, but sometimes we need the reminder. Or a wife might say to a husband, this is my... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or at work, sometimes we have to remember that what the boss wants, what the supervisor wants, has to be the way, even though we might not agree with the way. And even in the Bible, sometimes people had to be reminded of God's chain of authority. In Luke chapter 9, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter and James and John see a vision of Jesus talking with Moses and Elijah. And Peter says, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Let's put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He kind of wanted to create his own little trinity with Jesus, Moses, and Elijah being equal. But then a cloud enveloped them, the Shekinah glory of the Lord. And God said, no, Jesus, this is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And then the cloud disappeared, and the only one the disciples saw was Jesus. They had to be reminded that Jesus was God's chosen leader, that Jesus was the one that we should listen to, that he is Lord of heaven and earth, and all authority has been given to him on heaven and earth. Similarly, in the Old Testament, the Israelites periodically needed to be reminded of God's will with regard to leadership. In Numbers 11, they rebelled against the Lord and against Moses, and God had to remind them that Moses was the appointed leader. Numbers chapter 14, they complained. They had to be reminded that God was the leader and that Moses was his spokesperson. The last chapter, Numbers 16, Korah's rebellion. He had to be reminded that even though we are all priests of the Most High, God still has the appointed leader of the priesthood, and that's Aaron, and he's the only one, his descendants, that can approach the presence of God in the tabernacle. Now in chapter 17, today's lesson, God gives us an object lesson so that the point can be driven home that God has chosen Aaron to be the spiritual leader of the nation of Israel. Let's pick up the action, Numbers chapter 17 our leadership lesson for the day. This whole little section in Numbers is about God affirming leadership. And I think it speaks to us today because, you know, we don't always like what our leaders do. I certainly don't always agree with what the president does and what the Congress does. And I think it's good that we speak up. I think it's good that we use the court system. I think it's good that we work hard for reformation and legislation and renovation of the legal system, but nevertheless, we are still supposed to pray for and respect the people who are in positions of leadership, even if there are times they act like buffoons. Only in the most extreme cases where they tell you to do something that goes against the will of God then you disobey. You say we must obey God rather than men, you know, like the, the apostles said in Acts chapter 5. But here we go. Number 17, the Lord said to, Aaron, said to Moses, speak to the Israelites. You know, Moses was the one that God chose to speak his word and his will to them. Get 12 staffs from them one from the leader of each of their ancestral tribes. Write the name of each man on his staff. This is almost going to be like a magic trick. <laughs> you ever watch America's, most, America's Got Talent? And I think this year a magician won that, a Christian magician. And he did some amazing illusions. Well, this is even more amazing than anything he did. <laughs> Write the name of each man on his staff. On the staff of Levi, write Aaron's name, for there must be one staff for the head of each ancestral tribe. Place them in the tent of meeting in front of the testimony where I meet with you. 
The staff belonging to the man I choose will sprout, and I will rid myself of this constant grumbling against you by the Israelites. Now, a staff or a rod was a symbol of authority, like a shepherd's rod. Psalm 23, verse 4, your rod and your staff will comfort me. And we learn about the, the rod of Jesse, Jesus Christ, in Isaiah chapter 11. Psalm 89, verse 32, God will punish the wicked with his rod. Psalm 2, 9, you will rule over them with an iron scepter. That, that's like a rod. And so we see that imagery in the Bible. And there's other verses too. Them are just the ones that came to my head. And God says, the staff belonging to the man I choose will sprout, and I'll rid myself of this grumbling. Not that the Israelites will not ever grumble again, because there has to be not only the seeing of a miracle, but the changing of the heart in order to repent and quit grumbling. However, this is where God's going to stop listening to the grumbling, because he's providing irrefutable evidence and proof that Aaron is his chosen priest for the Old Testament era. Verse 6, so Moses spoke to the Israelites and their leaders. The leaders gave him 12 staffs, one for the leader of each of their ancestral tribes, and Aaron's staff was among them. Moses played the sta placed the staffs before the Lord in the tent of the testimony, and they were there all night long. Nobody went inside the tabernacle where those 12 staffs were. But watch what happens the next day. Verse 7, I'm sorry, verse 8. The next day Moses entered the tent of the testimony and saw that Aaron's staff, which represented the house of Levi, had not only sprouted, but had budded, blossomed, and produced almonds. Oh my goodness. Almonds were considered a delicacy of the land of Canaan. You remember in Genesis 43, verse 9, or is it? Later than verse 9, Jacob told the sons of Israel to take some almonds and some pistachios to the king of Egypt as a gift to pacify him. And some of the other things in here, the sprouting, the budding, the blossoming, that shows that it's God's will for Israel's leadership to flourish, to produce. Verse 9, then Moses brought out all the staffs from the Lord's presence to all the Israelites. They looked at them, and each man took his staff, and they could see that Aaron's staff was the one that was blossomed, and the other ones just looked the same. I got a kind of funny picture about this that I wanted to show you. If I was doing the children's sermon, I would have the kids look at it. But here we go. There's Aaron in his green outfit, smiling, showing his budded staff, and everyone else is like, oh man, we just got a bunch of sticks. <laughs> it's an object lesson. The one in green with the budded staff, that's the one that God has chosen for Israel to follow. He's the one to represent the people before Almighty God. And of course, we've got another symbol today. We've got the cross of Jesus Christ. We've got the risen Christ. That is our reminder that God has chosen Jesus to be our priest, our prophet, our prince, our king, our Lord. And he's the one we follow. Like it says in Luke 9, 36, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. God speaks very clearly. He doesn't stutter especially when it comes to reminding us who's in charge. And it's not you. And it's not me. It's Jesus, God's anointed king. That is an irrefutable piece of evidence. So it's interesting. The Israelites have this very clear miracle, this clear proof that God has chosen Aaron. But that doesn't mean Aaron was perfect. Aaron is going to disobey God, and he's not going to be able to see the promised land. You know, just because you're chosen by God doesn't mean you're perfect. Doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. Even the leaders are liable. Even the leaders have to listen to Almighty God. 
what happens next. Verse 10, the Lord said to Moses, put Aaron's staff back in front of the testimony to be kept as a sign to the rebellious. You know, when you think about the Ark of the Covenant in the tabernacle here in Numbers 17 verses 10 and 11, everything in there is a reminder of God's grace in spite of our sin. There's the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. That's not only a reminder of God's standard, it's a reminder of how we've broken the standard of God because they made the golden, Aaron made the golden calf and people were worshiping it instead of God, and we broke his commandments again and again, and Moses dashed them on the ground. So just looking at those commandments reminds us of our sin and God's grace. And looking at the manna, remember there's, there was some manna in a jar in the Ark of the Covenant. You know how they complained about the food that they were getting in Numbers chapter 11 and kvetching and crying out? That manna is not only a sign of God's grace. It's also a sign of man's sin because we complained against the gracious provision of God. And here, Aaron's budded staff is a reminder of God's grace in giving us somebody who can make atonement for us. But it's also a reminder that we rebelled and rejected God's atonement by disagreeing with whether or not God had really sent Aaron. So it's very interesting. And sometimes we need object lessons to remind us. And that kind of hurts my feelings a little bit because I'm a pastor and I like to talk. And I'd like to think that it's only the words that I say that make a difference. But as the old saying goes, a picture speaks a thousand words. And these visual aids, that staff, that manna, Those two tablets were visual aids reminding the people. And then in the last chapter, there was another visual, two chapters earlier, there was another visual aid. Numbers 15, the Israelites had to wear long tassels on the fringes of their garments, and that reminded them of the commandments that they were responsible for keeping. So, you know, object lessons are not such a bad thing. I I like the object lessons that we got in our church. I love the window of Jesus knocking on the door. It's a visual aid. I don't worship the window, but it reminds me that Jesus wants to enter my life, that he wants to be in my life, that he wants to be a part of my life, that he wants to have fellowship with me in my life. And so it's, it's good to have that. It's good to have these things. Well, God said in verse 11, This visual aid of the budded staff will put an end to their grumbling against me so that they will not die, hopefully. Verse 11, Moses did just as the Lord commanded him. And look at verse 12, it hits home. The Israelites said to Moses, we will die. We are lost. We are all lost. It's hitting them that they have rebelled against God. God's chosen leader. They have rebelled against God's will, and they desperately need Aaron to represent them and redeem and make atonement for them. And it's hitting home that they are sinners separated from a holy yet gracious and loving God. Verse 13, anyone who even comes near the tabernacle of the Lord will die. Are we all going to die? And in the next chapter, God will remind them of his grace. We need to be reminded of God's grace again and again, because sometimes we forget. We forget that no matter what we did last year, last month, last week, or last night, there's grace. Jesus died on the cross for every sin we ever made. And if we repent, believe, and receive, we'll be forgiven, we will not perish, and we will have eternal life. And that's a message that we need to be reminded of all the time, because some weeks it's going to hit us hard like a ton of bricks, just like it hit the Israelites, that we are lost. We are all lost. We need a savior. We need a Messiah. We need a king. We need a redeemer. And we'll need to be reminded of the gospel again, that Christ died, Christ rose, Christ is coming again. Receive him into your life, and you will not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus loves you. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. You guys have a wonderful weekend. I can't believe the weekend is already here. And come to church on Sunday. We're going to be looking at Mark chapter 5, 1 through 20, where Christ encounters the demon-possessed man among the tombs, 
east of the Sea of Galilee. I love that passage. It's going to be an awesome time of worship. You guys have a great day, and God bless.